but he says 10 a.m wake up i keep myself busy until the evening some days i'll work out at the gym other days i'll write articles or attend meetings it's rare that i have a truly free day with nothing scheduled 5 p.m head out to the arcade i bicycle to my regular arcade in shinjuku which takes about an hour there i'll play against the regulars and sometimes get asked to sign autographs or take pictures midnight return home i pedal back from Shin shinjuku riding the bicycle helps me helps keep me active and light exercise like that helps me think i have good ideas all the time on the ride home 3 a.m go to bed after getting home i take a bath and do some light research before sleeping then he says not wanting to disrupt my balance i follow this routine without change even when tournaments are coming up this allows me to set a rhythm it makes it easy to distinguish between when I'm doing well and when I'm in a slump. It allows me to maintain a consistent happiness level of 60. Like, probably 10 a.m., wake up, play Street Fighter for 16 hours, probably longer, and then go to sleep. And then he would just repeat that, and that was kind of the level of obsession he had early on and this book is great it has a lot of lessons about like um practicing mastery uh burnout leaving something coming back to it and it's all around being the best in the world at, at different versions of street fighter i started playing street fighter 6 it's been it's been a long time since i played games regularly and a pretty long time since i've played a fighting game regularly and probably like when Street Fighter V came out, I played for like a month. I don't know that. Or no, 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 Street Fighter IV. Then, yeah, Street Fighter V, maybe I played for like a couple weeks. And now I've played Street Fighter VI for, it's been like a, a couple days now. But thought I would uh, just talk about being a beginner. I read Daigo's book a few years ago just because I enjoy Street Fighter. Um, and books, so that seemed to be like a good intersection of things. Daigo is best known for Evo Moment 37. He wrote this book, uh, The Will to Keep Winning, in 2016, so it was published in 2016. He was 35 years old at the time. And then he just mentions that in one of the chapters, uh, his age. And then I read this, or I bought this in 2018, so like five years ago. I can't remember when I read it, So, maybe, but it was probably a few, maybe around then, maybe like 2019 or something like that. But um, here's a description in Daigo Umahara's first book, the most successful Street Fighter player in history reveals the secrets of becoming and remaining a world champion. Daigo's story of passion and perseverance offers seasoned pros and non-gamers alike an intensely personal view into the world of competitive video gaming or esports starting from years before the term existed. And I'm just gonna share uh, some of the highlights from the book. Number one, uh, Daigo's parents didn't push him into any career. He talks about his dad and his grandfather, their relationship. His dad didn't really pursue his own interests. And then he says that his dad ended up in a career with no connection to his own interests, a choice he sincerely regretted. So he vowed to never complain about what his own son wanted to do. This is where Daigo had kind of the confidence to become a pro gamer. And this was really a time when um, like some of the first tournaments he was winning were like Darkstalkers 3, Street Fighter 0 3, Capcom vs. SNK. So that was when he was 15, 17, and 19. And th this really wasn't this time where you could like, it sounded so silly to be a pro gamer that there wasn't all of this, there wasn't streaming, there weren't different platforms. If you won a tournament, it's not really going to like be enough to sustain you for the year. I think that's probably like the case now too. That uh, maybe maybe like winning a major tournament in a major game is enough, but without like sponsorships and that sort of and streaming that income, then yeah, just being very very good at a game is not enough. All right, here's the next highlight: winning isn't everything. So he says. There was a time when I was hung up on winning every game. If you dwell too much on wins, your scope narrows and you stop having good ideas. It gives you tunnel vision. You'll convince yourself that what you're doing is the only way forward, restricting your options. Being overly fixated on winning leads to nothing but sticking to conventional ways. At this point, I don't worry about outcomes. He has won a lot. So I, as mentioned, I just started playing Street Fighter 6. I am not winning all that often. and. It is this thing too where because of 
uh, the like matchmaking. When I win, it, it's great. It's fu it's fun to like stay motivated. I'm winning um, sometimes, but then I think the thing is like I could delude myself into thinking like, oh, I'm I'm actually like good at this. Um, I, if I have like a, a five game win streak or something like that, but I know I know enough that like okay, you know I I'm in silver. This is probably pretty trash, uh, and and right now I'm trying to like I know I, I shouldn't learn bad habits. It, now I might be like ingraining some bad habits that are working at this very beginner stage. So in, in that case, it's like oh yeah, winning doesn't really that mean that much at all right now. Then when I like watch a video of someone who knows what they're doing, like I was watching like this Justin Wong tutorial about getting better. And then I just, some of it, some of the language, I, I was just like, okay, I, I just haven't played games in a long time. I haven't played fighting games in a long time. Um, and it made me feel like, oh yeah, there's, there's just so much that I need to learn to try to get good. And also like getting good in a way isn't really everything for me right now. I'm just trying to enjoy my free time playing this game, so uh, I'm thankful for that. And yeah, this is uh, this next quote will be another reminder that like watching experts is good. Uh, and at the same time, it's like I need to be I need to remind myself that I'm not searching for uncharted territory. So here's a highlight from the book. Daigo says target uncharted territory. Reaching 10 isn't all that difficult. All you have to do is find someone else who's done so and follow their lead. The internet propagates information immediately and makes finding it easy. While not the best out there, such tactics are provisionally rather strong and require considerable, considerable effort to defeat. The path to achieving levels beyond 10 is harder to discern. That's the end of the quote. For me, 10 would be great. I would say I'm at a 2. So in this case, it's kind of taking the reverse of this quote uh, that I'm not looking for uncharted territory. I'm just trying to get a little bit better. And it is great that I, I really do appreciate what he mentions, that the internet pro internet propagates information immediately and makes finding it easy. So this is where it's good to watch experts play and then to just watch these beginner tutorials and then understand um, what things I should be focusing on, learning, what are the fundamentals, what are some like advanced techniques that I don't need to be really learning right now. Like in that tutorial with like Justin Wong, if he says something where he, he says, oh, this is uh, something I haven't mastered yet, I'm practicing this. That's probably something I don't, I never need to, like, I probably like years out of playing um, to need to learn some kind of, I think it's like walk, like you can add a step to a certain some certain sequence and then this i don't know that, that that's where it was just like okay watching experts is good and it's also a good reminder that um i'm a beginner i don't I, there are things i need to focus on right now and this goes into the next highlight from daigo what i wrote here was that this is when watching experts is bad the previous one is when watching experts is good to learn but then there's also the downside of watching experts and needing to practice and remember the steps in front of you. So here's the highlight. Daigo says, All the time, people ask me how to get better at gaming. The answer is simple. Practice. Every day. That's the only way. That advice isn't always useful though, so the first thing I normally recommend is to stay focused on what's directly in front of you. If the journey is a staircase, focus on climbing the first five steps. Even if it's pitch black, you should still be able to feel your way up five steps. Being told to climb a 500 step staircase would give most people pause. You're likely to give up on the climb altogether before even starting. That's the end of the quote. This is where it is. The internet does make it possible now to see that 500 step staircase and then to think, oh, I'm going to go climb that. But it, again, it's important to remember uh, what's in front of you. What are those five steps? Right now, I did some of the tutorials. Uh, where you learn some of the, the mechanics, which I think are good. Uh, those tutorials are great. And then there's also this sort of um, this tutorial that shows you different combos in sequence to practice. And it's something like, I don't know, for, for each, I think it's like five different levels. And I'm, I might be getting this wrong. Five different levels and say like in each of them, you're learning seven combos. So then there's like a few dozen combos that it can teach you. For me, I... I have this idea that 
I, I think it's probably that I only need to learn right now. I only need to focus on learning what, like five, three to five, and then it, and then to remember to practice them one at a time is another thing. So that's where it's like, oh yeah, I should go on the internet and then look at what are the like main three to five combos to learn. This is the whole thing with Bruce Lee of I fear not the man who learns or who practices 10,000 kicks, but the man who practices one kick 10,000 times. I would, I, I always have thought, what about the person who practices 10 kicks a thousand times or five kicks 20,000 or five kicks 2,000 times? I think that's the, the approach to take, especially as a beginner. Let me figure out like what are the say like 80-20, uh, what combos are used 80% of the time? What what five combos are used 80% of the time? And those are the ones I should start practicing in, in terms of this. What are the five steps in front of me? I'm just trying to like get past the, this silver level. Uh, on the road to gold, I don't need to worry about platinum and mass diamond plat or platinum diamond and master. That's, that's so far ahead of me right now. I need to figure out what to do for the basics. So uh, the next highlight here from Daigo's book, be patient because it takes a long time. That, that was what I wrote, but here's the actual highlight. He says, if you want to master something, start by carefully studying the basics for at least two or three years. Learn the theory behind the game and how to reason your way through moves rather than winging it. Build your base before seeking out different ways to play and then explore options for developing your own style. Premore, premature attempts at creating a unique approach or just practicing while you're still not that good will end up with you bumping into a low ceiling. That's the end of the highlight. I think that is this very important thing where right now I'm really so bad at the game and I just need to study basics as mentioned before. Like I don't need to study the advanced combos if I can't even do some of the basic combos. So what are like the basic effective combos? that these are the things so it's like what do you say like advanced players what combos do they use that can be executed by a beginner that i think that's a, a good intersection to think of because it's like oh these will be useful throughout and also something i can actually like get a hold of right now and then this is also just this idea of like setting the right goals um, I'm not trying to win any any tournaments or be the best in the world at this thing. That would be, um, and then to think I could do that in any sort, to think that would even be possible is one thing. Like, um, you know, maybe if I was a teenager, if, if, yeah, if I was a teenager and I had um, the time, I guess, like to. May, I'm making excuses up as well. This will go into like one of the later lessons, but there's just such a gap and this not being like my main 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 thing uh is another thing and i guess there's probably like some other lesson here about like actually having fun and maybe this is the wrong approach to have fun but i do just want to get better at the game um so yeah right now learning uh just basics at the same time trying not to wing it and i'm in no way trying to like develop my own style this reminds me of uh, i used to play starcraft a brood war so like um and I remember at first, it, I, when I was first, first playing, uh, this wasn't like when it was released, but just like a couple years after that, probably. Um, I would play, it was basically like just winning it. And then I would play with another friend and we both weren't really that good. So, you know, we're beating each other, thinking we're like getting better. And then we had a couple older friends who we played against. And then, yeah, they just, they destroyed us like pretty effortlessly, uh, destroyed me and then uh, I asked one of them, they're like, he's just like, oh yeah, like just learn a build order and practice that. And I didn't even know what a build order was. So th that's where it's like, oh, I didn't even know the basics at that point. And it was kind of this thing like, oh yeah, there's going to be build orders like that are optimal. And at that time it was like pretty, you know, it was, this was before it was, uh, the game evolved in Korea. Uh, so like the like what was optimal at the time was probably pretty bad as well because the game evolved so much um but yeah it was kind of like why yeah you can't you might be able to create a unique approach but it won't be a good approach if you haven't first learned some good approaches so that can be the proper order to do things is learn the fundamentals 
the good standard way to do things before you try to create a unique way to do things. Unless your goal is just to like play with the fun characters and have fun that way, uh, which is which is a nice approach as well. Uh, I do want to start winning more and uh, st at least feel like I'm, I'm somewhat getting better at the game. So next up, how do you get better? Of course, it's practice. So here's what Daigo has to say about practice. I'm often asked how frequently I practice, and my answer is always the same. 363 days a year, I always spend New Year's Eve and New Year's Day together with my family, and I've never once broken that tradition. I practice games every day of the year, except for those two. So yeah, he loves games, he's obsessed with games, he's good at games, and it's his career. And this can be a good thing. If you can find this uh, in life, just something that you want to do 363 days a year, that you just think about all the time and if you can make a career of that amazing um the important thing uh there's a good book called so good they can't ignore you that there there were so many like daigo it's good to remember that like daigo was the exception that he came from is it like the late 90s those games emerged and then was able to make a career out of it and a continued career out of it once um the internet made it even more possible to stream and um, make it a career. But at that time, there were thousands, tens of thousands of kids around the world probably that were like, oh yeah, I would love to just play games for my career. And it was this thing where it seemed like the dream job was being a game tester because you played games all day. And this was before the internet where you could hear stories from game testers and then you learn that like oh no it's actually like you're playing these broken games for a while uh, and then you have to you know you're not just having fun doing it it can be fun there's fun aspects to it and it probably is like a pretty fun um job compared to a lot of other things but it's not just complete fun the entire time anyway yeah so back to that idea like an important thing to being able to find a career that you enjoy is becoming good at that thing and um, yeah, that's part of like, if you master something, you'll enjoy it more. And then it is this sort of cycle of, um, you, you get good at something, you enjoy it. That means you'll spend more hours at it because you enjoy it. And then that makes you better. And then if you can find that loop in life, then amazing. That That's like something to strive for, to aspire to. So, uh, this reminded me of just this idea of practice and then the holidays of uh this reminded me of stephen king here's his quote from on writing he says i used to tell interviewers that i wrote every day except for christmas the fourth of july and my birthday that was a lie i told them that because if you agree to an interview you have to say something and it plays better if it's something at least half clever also i didn't want to sound like a workaholic dweeb just a workaholic i guess the truth is that when i'm writing i write every day workaholic dweeb or not that includes Christmas, the 4th, and my birthday. At my age, you try to ignore your birthday anyway. And when I'm not working, I'm not working at all. Although during those periods of full stop, I usually feel at loose ends with myself and have trouble sleeping. For me, not working is the real work. When I'm writing, it's all the playground. And the worst three hours I ever spent there were still pretty damn good. That's the end of the quote, but I highlighted, I guess double highlighted, this part for me not working is the real work again if you can if you can find something if you can find work where not working feels like work amazing uh that's really really something to aspire to i have felt that at times in the past with like um programming with design where it was just like uh especially like this is a few years ago but w w having like an idea in my head of like some side project that I would want to build and then writing code for it for whatever reason like it, it became this thing where like I would just want that, that was like all I would want to do is um write code build some like website and yeah that, that could be a, a good yeah it's a great thing if you can find that um and it seems like Daigo found something similar with playing Street Fighter or playing fighting games and then St Stephen King found that with writing and I think you'll see that pattern with um, a lot of the greats in their own uh, fields, in their own disciplines. Then uh, this next uh, highlight is about... So <laughs> there were, I think, a couple periods where Daigo 
just w didn't play fighting games. He wasn't playing competitively for, and I think he just wasn't playing them for a year or like two years at a time. One of the times he left Street Fighter was to play Mahjong, and he because I think it was that like other gamers were leaving to play Mahjong because there was more money in it. Again, this reminds me of like StarCraft, where I think there were a lot of StarCraft players who were leaving to play online poker just because it was more lucrative. Um, not Maybe not just, but it's also like entertaining as well, I'm guessing. But yeah, he says, here's the highlight. He says, in Mahjong, however, you have significantly less control. It's a four player game and the tiles you're dealt limit your play. Often you can see what's going on, but can't do anything about it. That's the end of the highlight. This is where it's nice with like fighting games. Maybe there's, I, I was about to say there's no luck, but uh, in a way, it, you know, it's like advanced rock, paper, scissors sometimes. So you are just trying to anticipate what other people are doing. Um, but yeah, it is that thing that it's a two player game. You have more control over what's happening. You have complete control over your own character, but um, and there's not the randomness that something like Mahjong Tiles will, will give you that. Um, th there's always like a re I guess I'm, I'm speaking about like Street Fighter and maybe I'm wrong about this at this point because I don't know like uh, a ton about the games. But yeah, it's like if you throw out a move and then um, some, yeah, it's just like the priorities don't change. The priorities aren't, aren't random about like what thing is going to uh, connect against your opponent or if your opponent's move is going to connect. Um, so yeah, there's this thing of he loved that control and coming back to something, uh, coming back to fighting games. He always was pulled back to fighting games because he likes competition. He likes having that full control. And then it is something where it's um, learning like mastery over yeah building mastery over something then uh here we go so this is about evo moment 37 and the importance of uh being zen like staying calm and here's the highlight daigo writes while justin pumps the crowd to psych up i remain seated my mind calm and collected i've been in many tournaments enough to avoid getting caught up in the hype for better or worse it makes no difference that this is the world championship final or that evo is being watched by fighting game enthusiasts worldwide. I play my normal game no matter what, no matter the play's time or opponent. That's the end of the quote. And actually, I think this is not about Evo Moment 37. I think they like played again. Um, yeah, like years later. But yeah, it is this idea that uh, he does. He, the, the main thing about the like Evo Moment is how calm he stays. That's like the main thing is um, the, the input and timing is fine, but it's just like, the what is it like 15 parries that he had to do and with everybody yelling justin wong is just like you know mashing buttons because it might cause like a distraction outside of the game uh that could get in daigo's head but uh for him it's like complete calm uh so it is something where he says this but also like you, you can kind of see it in the video which is a, a cool thing to have of course um and then i guess like while it's on this moment i'll talk about this next highlight and the importance i guess of <laughs> style and how you play how you win that uh something that's kind of lost to time is it's maybe i think fighting game enthusiasts know this but uh probably generally people think that was probably like a tournament winning thing but daigo lost that tournament he that was semifinals i think and then he made it to the finals and lost there so, but all that said, um, it is this very stylish win that has stood for, I guess it's like 16 years ago now, um, since that happened. Maybe more? No, it has to be, I'm pretty sure it has to be more than that. Um, but yeah, here, here's a quote that is from his book. He says, getting that perfect read can be a stylish way to win, but you're deluding yourself if you think you can pull that off all the time. That's the end of the quote, and I guess there's, I don't know that there's really a lesson here that the most, like, yeah, I guess it is that, like, the stylish win is remembered um, for decades. These single moments can be remembered for forever just because it's like, oh yeah, that fits into such a short clip. Like, that clip went viral. It's short. It's very clear, like, you could explain it to a casual gamer, like, oh yeah, they, they're down to one hit. Um, 
even like a chip hit and they were able to survive because of this like super hard input that they had to 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 do um with everybody yelling very very easy to explain but he even he couldn't make a career of like just that landing he was able to um make a career because he was able to continue to win tournaments and then to continue to build up um you know career capital as like this top level gamer and to continue to, to evolve and then play different games at a high level like street fighter 4 or 5 and now 6 at like a very high level that's how he was able to build a career the career can't be built on that one stylish way that he won but it was awesome uh anyway so here's another one about uh, or another section where he talks about his early tournament wins i kind of mentioned this earlier um but the idea here is to not brute force it so here's the highlight he says capcom periodically holds official tournaments three of which i won in a row at 15 for darkstalkers 3 at 17 for street fighter 03 and at 19 for capcom vs snk the official tournaments are always single elimination the format was designed to make repeated wins difficult so naturally they expected someone new to win each time luck played a part but everyone acknowledged my hat trick as quite an achievement that third win cast me as an elite among the elite people were saying how i was on a whole other level that's the end of the quote so yeah he does acknowledge like there is luck in, in all of this um but yeah to win three in a row is yeah where there's like uh what is it high variant i guess like yeah sometimes with some variants then yeah three in a row single elimination tournaments that does mean something so then he thinks going into the fourth tournament that uh he really has to win this thing just to like keep that going and uh the pressure to win he says in retrospect i'm glad i didn't win that tournament if i had i'd have convinced myself that such misguided efforts were the way to win eventually i'd have paid for it in a way that might have ended my career working yourself to the point where you lose your appetite and can't sleep is simply foolish that's the end of the quote and yeah he was describing like his routine leading up to that fourth one that he was uh obsessed he was like losing sleep he wasn't really eating well i think he was like only eating udon because he his health was like he just couldn't keep anything else down that he was eating and then yeah he lost that tournament uh what this reminds me of is uh you know michael jordan the greatest basketball player of all time maybe lebron but it's one of those like 1a 1b sort of things maybe some other people you know you throw uh, different people in there so you know i never like disagree when someone says michael jordan's the greatest player of all time um but what i do disagree with is when they say like yeah he won six it, he won three in a row, row twice if he didn't leave for two years he would have won eight in a row it's like it's very unlikely that he would have won eight in a row i i think uh the difference between i think there's like a very like like an enormous gap in between doing two three peats is difficult very very difficult but the gap to get to eight in a row is still pretty huge i think I'm, because like each year the pressure just builds and builds and builds so um yeah here he daigo tried to win the fourth national tournament in a row and pressure got to him and now uh the last quote that i'll do here is about quality over quantity so in that case he was trying to win his fourth one his fourth tournament in a row and then um just tried to add more quantity but here's a quote about quality he says back when i used to play like crazy i thought i'd never improve or achieve anything if i didn't spend as much play time as possible now i realize that the quality of the time spent is more important than the quantity spending 15 hours a day on something won't ensure growth conversely that much time on something can damage your health nowadays i feel that three hours a day is plenty of practice making small discoveries in three hours is far more meaningful than finding nothing in 15. it's also a much easier practice to maintain then uh further on uh in another part of the book he talks about practice again he says i did practice street fighter 5 for over 10 hours a day immediately following its release but recently i've settled back into playing four or five hours a day and then spending the rest of my day living life with enough ability practicing less keeps your mind fresh which is necessary to get results that's the end of the quote and yeah this is that idea of uh finding the right balance when trying to improve in something of the 
amount of time that you spend on it and then the amount of like high quality time you can spend on something. So uh, this goes to like deep work principles. Like um, you're not going to be able to do deep focused work for 20 hours a day uh, or even like 16 hours a day is pretty hard to sustain. It's hard to like back to like the programming example, like it's hard to sustain some kind of like hackathon pace for a very long time. Um, oftentimes when you look at kind of like the averages of it, that if you do the grind for uh, whatever, two weeks in a row, including weekends, then maybe there's a lull period after that. Uh, instead, it can be good to like find what you can be uh, consistent with each day, how, how long you can like practice with intensity. Um, that said, I think Daigo also has this point that um, as that's something you can do, you can practice these fewer hours when you have that skill base but there are some things where it's just like brute force hours to just build the repetition sometimes is helpful but if you're looking at that you know like he says trying to go beyond 10 out of 10 trying to find those insights isn't necessarily going to come from um the quantity of hours and i had a lot of other quotes so i'll, I'll probably do another uh, episode on this but i wanted to end with this Stephen, Qu Stephen, another Stephen King quote. He says, 20 hours a day, I live in the same reality that everyone, everybody else lives in. But for four hours a day, things change. And if you ever ask me how that happens or why it happens, I'd have to tell you, it's as much a mystery to me as it is to anybody else. That's the end of the quote. And I think that ties in well with Daigo's obsession with gaming. Um, and that can be a goal to aspire to for uh, your entire life. Not necessarily video games or writing, but whatever it is where you can find something you love so much that, uh, like that other highlight, for me, not working is the real work. So find something you love so much that not doing it feels, <laughs> feels like work in a way. And yeah, find something else where things change and you're living in another world. Thanks for checking this out.